Very, very big mistake in the movie The Secret. Okay. And in the movie The Secret, the story that was told was that all you have to do is think, believe in your heart, and you'll achieve. It's not true. There's a lot of people who think wonderful, great thoughts. They believe that I deserve this and I can have this. But they don't do one thing, and this is what causes their problem. They don't take consistent action every day. I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years, maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995. And I put it in my wallet, and I kept it there, and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million on, I think it was Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber, yeah. yeah. So you visualize yourself like... Visualization works if you work hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's yeah, the thing. You, you can't hard. just visualize yeah. and then, you know, go eat a sandwich. You're in a universe and two plus two equals four. Mm -hmm. Two plus two only equals four if you accept that two plus two equals four. Two plus two is going to be what I want it to be. We can change the neural patterns in our brain, the software, just like a computer software. You got to believe in yourself. Like I said, if you speak it, believe it, you'll receive it, baby. It's just like that. Your mind is very powerful. The universe is very powerful. Speak things into it. It'll come to you, baby. You speak it. Believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Speak it, believe it, receive it. And it shall be yours. I am attracting my perfect life. I have created All right. a wonderful life for myself. Right, how do I turn this off? I have the courage <laughs> to follow my dream. Okay. All right. So uh, that's the opening, um, opening video. I think that probably hits home with a lot of people, right? And it's, it's not unlike things that you haven't heard here um, on, on Success Zone. But here, here's the thing, okay, about what we just showed you. And, you know, like I say, I always, I always take notes. And, um, you know, when you start to think differently, when you start to think differently in whatever it is that you do, okay, the first thing and the first obstacle, the first obstacle you have to overcome is yourself. So when you start thinking differently, it makes you feel better first. If you don't feel good, okay, right? It doesn't transfer into the next phase, which like attracts like. But who do you have to like first? You gotta like you, right? I, I don't miss a mirror when I go through the house. You all may laugh, I don't miss a mirror. I like Jeff, okay, I do. Okay, and it's, 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 it's just a fact. I have to feel good about me. And if I feel good about you or about myself, I could feel good about others. And, and, and the easiest way to get people on your side is just say, you know what, I like you. Like attracts like. But if you're full of doubt and you're full of hate and you don't feel good about yourself, right? First of all, it's very hard to even get out of the house. So when you start to look at these things, you are a magnet. We are all magnets. We attract what we want to attract into our life. And I always go back, right, to my, my, my former surroundings. I always go back to that because you're a product of your environment, right? And my environment was not always, right, something that you want to be around. That was for sure. So I had to get out of that environment. And this is why we say you need to associate. Once you feel better about you, you got to get other get around other people that feel better about themselves. You got to change your environment. And this is what I love about our industry. Our industry is a group of people that really want more. And so, you know, if you could go to the Eric Worre event, go Right. If you if you could go to your company events, not if you can go when you go to your company events, this is the stuff that keeps feeding you. And eventually, you know what happens 
even though you may not be getting the results, you start to believe it. You start to believe you're going to get the results. This works both ways, right? There's people that commit murder that believe they didn't do it, and they convince themselves they didn't do it. That's the power of the mind. But see, you got to you got to work that okay it, to your advantage. People, and this is the number one thing I always get. How do I believe if I haven't gotten the results? You got to believe you're going to get the results, right? Think about Jim Carrey, $10 million check he wrote to himself for services rendered, and he gave himself five years. He was broke. Well, you could go on and on about all the people that were broke and that made it, but they believed okay, they could. And everything from that point forward, once the belief was there, was just the journey. It was just the journey. The thousand no's and all the audi auditions didn't make a difference, right? The, the, the painful mornings, if you're an athlete, okay, and, and going out there and practicing didn't make a difference because the visualization was, I'm going to receive that gold medal at the Olympics. I'm going to cash this $10 million check. They never talked about what if it didn't work. Now, here's the only difference, okay? These people were not trying to get other people to do what they're doing. Do you guys get it? If I'm an athlete, if I'm an athlete and my goal is to win a gold medal, I'm not trying to get other people to win the gold medal with me. We are. And this is why our belief is so much more, um, it, it, it's, it's something that has to be done. You got to have the belief because if you don't believe, no one else is going to follow you. See, the only person those people had to convince was themselves. Now, maybe the director, maybe the producer, right, or, or whatever it was, maybe the coach. Okay, but over here, we're trying to get other people to buy into what we're doing. This is why our belief is, 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 is mandatory. You got to have it. So now, how do you get the belief? Because if the visualization is there, right, and the belief starts to come, now it's not just that the checks start rolling in. See, that's the other thing. I love what he said. I can't have the belief and go eat a sandwich. The belief drives the desire. The desire draws the work ethic. Without the work ethic, it doesn't matter what you believe. Hard work works, period. Hard work works. And if you really check yourself, because that's what Success Zone really is all about, okay, is, is checking yourself. If you really check yourself and starts with what? Okay, did you work hard? It's Friday. Did you work hard last week? Now define what working hard was. And then you got to keep reverse engineering and ask yourself, well, if I didn't, why? Well, I don't believe. Well, how come you don't believe? Because I don't feel good about myself. Well, why don't you feel good about myself? And you keep reverse engineering. Well, I need to lose weight. I need more energy. Whatever that is, now you got to go back to the very first step. Most people just want the $10 million check cashed. No, now you got to go back and the, you cannot shortcut it. This is why most people, when polled, said for me to become financially independent, I would have to win the lottery. Second was go to Las Vegas and hit a jackpot. And the third was a stock tip. See, all that says is I don't have to do anything to better myself, it's just gonna to come to me. Well, good luck with that plan. Okay, but can I share with you something? The majority of the people that you're gonna to talk to, they don't have a plan. And when you insert yourself into their life, you become their plan. You're the plan. And if they don't believe you believe, they're not following your plan. Do you see where it all starts? It all starts with, oh my gosh, 
I finally met somebody. This person made an impact on my life. And all you could do, all you could do, and this is what's going to keep your sanity, is tell people what to do and work with the ones that do it. That's it. Otherwise, you will go insane. Trying to figure out, right, how to get people involved. And once they get involved, how are you going to make them start doing something? You can't make people do anything. All you could do is set the example and show the path. And that's what I want to show you today. I want to show you what the path is. Okay. The path is commitment, right? Okay. Now we got to reverse engineer now. Ready? You believe in you. Let's just, let's just go straight to the starting line. Some of you have to work hard on this, but let's say you do believe in you. Okay. You've, you're starting to eat right. You maybe have an exercise program. You're walking every day. You're figuring out how to make you feel good about you. Okay. So now you're at the starting line. Now you got to know what to do. It's the number one thing everybody says. What do I do, Jeff? Well, there's critical activities. Okay. There's critical activities. And once again, you may have seen this training, but be present on this training and pretend you haven't heard it. Because if you're taking the journey, you will hear each and every training differently because you're ready to hear it. Sometimes you're just not ready to hear it. But the first critical activity, okay, once you're at the starting line, right? Once you've done whatever you have to do to make you feel good, right? Making you feel better, whatever that is daily. Now, now it should motivate you enough to, be act, act, to have activity of accountability. To be accountable to the activity that you put forth. Now, this is individualized. This is something based on what your commitment level to your company is. It's basically a schedule plan, right? The first thing that's going to happen, here come the health club analogies, right? The first thing that's going to happen, if you commit to a workout program and you get a trainer, he's going to schedule you to be there, I promise you, no less than three days a week, probably five, if you're really committed to your goals. And he's going to say, what time can you be here? Your choice. I need you for an hour and 30 minutes, five days a week. And you're going to schedule yourself. Same thing here. You've got to schedule yourself to do the necessary things it's going to take for you to achieve your goals based on the company and the products you represent. Period. This is not something that, oh my gosh, this is eye-opening. You all know this. But let me just ask you, because I'm going to ask the question after every time we do something here. Have you committed to a scheduled plan? Do you have your plan? If it's yes, great job. Success. If you're following your plan, even more success. You know why that's important? Because you're trying to impress who right now? You. Only person you got to impress is yourself, period. If I'm impressed with me because I'm following my plan, what do you think that does to my belief? Forget the results. Just by you following a plan, you have found a little success. Little successes transfer into bigger successes. As minute as you may think this is, you know why people don't, well, okay, I have a plan. They think it's minute. They think, it, they think it's not going to make a difference in their life. That is the starting block, is telling yourself you're going to do it. Starting block. Doing it, now you have activity. I've never met a person with consistent activity who doesn't eventually get the results. It's, it's, it's almost an impossibility. So here's the good news. 
and the bad news. You're in control of this plan. I've told this story a thousand times. Okay, when I was working for somebody else, they gave me my plan. I had no choice but to follow it because they were paying me. When I became an entrepreneur, no one gave me a plan. No one gave me a plan. I had to create the plan. And guess what? I did nothing. Because when the time is yours, it's amazing what you do. Do you know what you do normally? Nothing. I did nothing for two years. Two years did nothing until that my first mentor said, you got to put together a plan. He said, how many hours a day did you give Bally's? I said, 14. He said, how much did you make? I said, $180,000 a year. He said, now what's your plan here? I said, I want to make a million dollars. He goes, show me your plan. I said, I don't have one. He goes, you're nuts. And he walked away. You gave them 14 hours a day to make 15,000 a month. You have a goal here of a million dollars and you can't tell me what you're doing on a daily basis. See, kind of tough love, right? He didn't coddle me. He just said, you're just, you're dumb. He was very blunt. So don't, he goes, don't tell me this is not working. You're not working it. And he was right. So you've got to put this together, guys. Number one, you've got to have a daily plan with your activities that you know you have to do. And the things that you know you have to do is the very things you avoid. You know why? Because it requires talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> it's comical, okay? But the number one thing we're supposed to do, see, we'll research, we'll change PowerPoint slides, right? We'll dissect the comp plan. But the very thing that we know has to be done is the very thing we avoid. Why? Because it's disappointment. That's like Jim Carrey saying, okay, I want to I wanna cash this $10 million check, but I'm not going to go on any auditions. I just don't like, right, all these people looking at me and me reading my script, and I have to put my best foot forward, and they're evaluating me, and I'm not going to go on another audition because it's just going to be another no. I mean, can you imagine? Well, that's how a lot of us run our business. So be accountable to your activity that you have scheduled. Know how to lead. Know how to lead. See, once you make your decision, then I got to talk to people. Now you got to know how to talk to people. Now you have to know what door to go in with people. And we've done this a lot with all of you. How do you know what door to go in? Right? Because you have two doors. You got you, you to gotta go into the door that's going to open them up the most. Am I going to go in the product door or the opportunity door? Well, the tra this is not the training to really dissect this, right? But when you listen and you ask the right questions, you'll know what door to go in. I'm just showing you today the activity that has to be done, the critical activities. Know how to lead. Know how to lead a conversation. Know how to start a conversation. Know how to engage the conversation. Know how to lead the conversation. I can lead with product, but you guys know me now, right? Now this is 25 years talking to you. I always have put in my head, because it's been drilled in my head, that people go to work every day for money. And so I've always tried to lead the conversation into the opportunity. And we'll get to that in a second. Okay, number three, get to the first rank in your company's compensation plan. See, this is, this is tailored to what we're doing. We call our first rank getting 50% pro qualified because we pay a 50% immediate income when a new person is sponsored. Okay, so that's the first rank in the company that I represent. So whatever it is for your company, 
It could be a manager. It could be whatever it is, whatever the, the name is. That's insignificant. But see, when you accomplish something, I'm telling you, the key to your success, you got to celebrate it. You got to celebrate it. You got to do whatever you have to do to make you feel good. Every day, every step, every conversation, you got to find in that activity, listen, in that activity that you're putting effort in, you got to find your little successes. Because I'm telling you, a number of little successes equals a rank, equals dollars in your paycheck. Got to always find it. So watch. If I've scheduled myself and I have my schedule plan, that is a success. If I execute that schedule plan, that's a success. If I'm in a conversation with a person and I found myself leading the conversation, you got to tell yourself that was success. And those two things lead you to your first rank. And when you hit your first rank, I don't care what it is. It doesn't make a difference. You got to celebrate, right? Like it's your 50th wedding anniversary, okay? 25th, I don't know. You guys get it. You know, we'll celebrate our birthday. Uh, the bir our birthdays are the most important things in our lives. It's my birthday. It's my birthday, okay? You know what? Every day could be a birthday here. Because every day, every single day, you're out there, you're getting better. Every day, you wake up, you're different than you were la la yesterday. And that's, the, that's my only goal with everybody, is to get them to believe they're better than the day before. And eventually, you wake up a year later, a year, 12 months I mean, look how these weeks fly by, guys. 12 months is nothing. It's Friday again. I, I just, I, it's, it's, it's amazing how it's, it's going to be Christmas soon. I might even get my Christmas tree up. Honey, put the Christmas tree up. Let's, let's get prepared now. Put the turkey in the oven because it's, it's here. So this is the things that you have to do. Number four. Okay, activity, feed, feed this. Okay, you can't see me, right? Feed this every day, feed this every day with a reading and listening library. Got to feed it every day. Why? Because other people are going to feed you their content. I don't want to hear their content. That's the content of negativity. You walk up and down the street, you get into conversations. You're not leading the conversation. Just look where the conversation goes. Turn on the television, listen to the radio. Okay, it's insane. We're being fed. You got to eliminate that and you got to feed your brain what you want to give it. That You might as well be in jail. Right? You might, you might as well be in jail because when you're in jail, they feed you what they want to feed you. You don't say, hey, I want steak today. But see, we run our business, we, we run our life like we're in jail. Whatever people tell us, we believe. Whatever people give us, we take. No, I'm not taking what you're selling. I'm taking what I'm selling. And I'm going to put into my brain what I want to feed it. And I'm going to feed it, okay, the, I'm going to feed it all the stuff. I'm going to feed it the millionaire mind. I'm going to feed it rich dad, poor dad. I'm going to feed it quantum leaps. I'm going to feed it how, to, how, how, how successful people lead. I'm going to feed it think and grow rich. I'm going to feed it what to say when you talk to yourself. I'm going to feed it the 10 roads to riches. I'm going to feed it the seven habits of highly effective people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed it everything that I want to feed it, and I have 50 more in front of me. That's what I'm going to feed my brain. I have to. I have to. Reading and listening library. 
every day. Now, you don't sit home all day and read. You read a chapter a day. You want to you expand it? Read two chapters. Read one in the morning, one before you go to bed. So you wake up because who are you trying to impress? Yourself. Who's going to help you on this journey? You're going to help yourself. No one in your downline is going to help you on your journey. You're going to help your journey. So Jeff has to be right. If I'm not right, how can I help anybody else? What do they say? If you want to help the poor, don't be one of them. Okay, you, can, you gotta help yourself first. And this is what I love. So I gotta feed myself every day. And so if you feed it in the morning, you're ready for the day. And when you feed it at night, that's what you're thinking about. And, and, and the stuff that you read, is so empowering. And then all of a sudden you start to believe what you've read. And then when you start to believe what you read and what you're being told, your activity starts to show it. And it's not, it's not that you're talking to people differently, it's the responses they give you don't affect you anymore. It's the same objections. It's not like because you believe everybody's gonna write you a check or you're not gonna hear any more no's. The only difference between me and all of you is my the no's and the people who quit don't affect me. I, I empathize for them. See, they don't affect my attitude, otherwise they've won. Why would you give people that power? You don't have to give people that power. The only power you have is to make yourself better and they don't see a chink in the armor. And everything I do, I wanna put the mirror in front of them. If they quit, it's because of them. You could tell me it was because of the company, you could tell me because of the customer service, you could tell me it was because of the product, okay? Other people will persevere through that stuff. You've chosen to take those obstacles and quit or never make the decision. Don't try to put that on me, dude. That doesn't work. But with the average person, it does work. The person that's not sold on themselves, that stuff works. And then they start texting the upline. This person quit because of customer service. No, they didn't. They just found their excuse not to work on themselves. That's what they found. You gotta listen to me, because they're gonna come at you, even if they do get involved, then you're gonna wonder why they're not doing it. And they're gonna tell you all the reasons why. Well, if you brought that person in correctly, okay, and you let them know, okay, that if your company is going through some growth, there'll be struggles, then don't bring that back up. It's amazing how some people persevere through the struggles and other people fail. So I never listen to an excuse. They're selling themselves that excuse. Don't let them sell you their excuses because here's why it won't affect you because you know where you're going. Why? Let's recap again because you have a scheduled plan. You know how to lead. You've already hit a rank. You're feeding yourself a good reading and listening library. You know the answer. They've just chosen not to work on themselves. Number six, okay, and these critical activities. Guys, you gotta get good at showing your plan. If that's your craft, I go back to the analogy. I go back to the Jim Carrey analogy. It's like him showing up at the audition and not knowing his lines. Wait a minute, right? Here's, here's what you're gonna be reading for. You're gonna be reading for Dumb and Dumber. And here's the scene I want you to act out at the audition. He shows up to the audition and he goes, I don't know my lines. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you know your lines? Do you know what you're portraying? Do you know what you're trying to get people into? Do you know the message your company is trying to send in their presentations? Do you know your presentation? 
If you are doing the presentation for your company, before you click the next slide, do you know what the next slide is? Or would you have to click the slide and they go, oh, oh yeah, that's the slide. Then you don't know your presentation. You don't know your lines. You, you're not prepared to show your plan. You see, as simple as that is going, I need the slide deck. I want to make sure I know the message. When you listen to a presentation, even though you've heard it a thousand times, do you know the purpose of the presenter and why he's saying what he's saying when he's saying it? See, that's when you start listening as if you have to present. Otherwise, you know what you do? You, you, you uh, multitask, you put, this, you put the presentation on, and you're really not listening. Listen to your company's presentation as if you had to do the next one. I promise you, you will listen differently. See, I know the next slide no matter what it is. What, no matter what training I'm doing, no matter what presentation I'm doing, I know the next slide. I'm preparing the person, I'm preparing on the slide I'm on for the next slide. It's the same thing that needs to happen in your conversations. Forget the slides now. Now you're just talking to a person. Do you know, when I say, do you know how to lead them? Do you know what to say to lead them? Do you know whatever the response is? what your response needs to be. See, this is where you start to get good. You know why? Because you've talked to a thousand people, because you've done a thousand presentations. There's no shortcuts. You're so good, Jeff. No, I'm not, I'm not that good. I've just done a lot of presentations. And no one affects me. No one affects me. I don't like the way you said that. I don't like the way that was presented. I, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference because you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. You just gotta be you. You just have to know what your purpose is. My purpose is always genuine. To show people an opportunity, Give them an opportunity and be them to support them in the opportunity they chose. That's it. That's all I can do. And I'm going to be the guide dog. And eventually when they get to see, they don't need me anymore. I'm trying to get everybody to see. But you're, a lot of people are trying to figure out why it's not working. Well, just, just here you go. Here's your report card. Just grade yourself. It's all you got to do. And it's not, be, it's not beating yourself up. It's being honest. That's all it is. Edification. You always edify your leadership. You always edify, right, the, 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 corporate, um, the, the corporate power, right, the CEOs, the vice presidents. You always talk good. If you start talking bad about your company or your upline or, or the CEO, or whatever it is, you're putting yourself down. You think you're just giving other people an excuse. It, you, you, it, you, you're, who, what, you think I'd get involved with you if you said, well, listen, okay, my upline, I can't stand them. And I'll tell you that the, the, the CEO has no idea what they're doing. And I, you know, I want you to get involved with me. What, wait a minute, and our customer service sucks and the products don't work. I mean, did you see? You got to edify. You got to be proud of what you're involved in. Now, watch this. If everything's not perfect, can you be proud? Yes. I could be proud on the journey that they're taking. I could be proud of what they're trying to put forward. And my, 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 my logic is if everything isn't perfect, okay, Alicia, let me tell you something. <clears throat> I'll give you an example of our, our last company. Man, I am so excited, okay? We, we are moving into something no one else has ever done. It's wearable technology, okay? And, and we're, we're on the forefront. And I am so proud that CEO of that company, and I won't say his name, the CEO, man, what a visionary. And he really sees this being the future. 
but we're just getting started. And what I love about this company is, you know what? We have, we have the chance and the opportunity to be the face of this company. We get to shape customer service, right? We, we, we get to go out there and put together the presentations. We're brand new. So I can, I can edify, but yet let Alicia know not everything's perfect, right? That's being, that's being honest. And so this is where I believe opportunity starts, is being involved in the beginning. But the good news is, and I say this almost in every three-way call I do, the good news is we're brand new. The bad news is we're brand new. But that's where I see opportunity. I don't know what you see, and I always say this, because I'm in a company right now that's brand new. And, and, I, and I always say to the person that I'm talking to that that's where the opportunity lives. And some people will stray away from that type of an opportunity because they want to wait till things are more in place. And I say, that's okay. But that's not where we are as a company right now. We're looking for the people that have the ability to see something before it happens. So I give them, I give them the out. Well, that's just not me, Jeff. I have to make sure things are more in place. Great. Please keep us in mind. We'll follow up with you. But I will tell you, Alicia, everything will never be perfect ever. But that's okay. But see, that's me still being able to edify, but let people know not everything is perfect. But see, some of some people just talk about everything's not perfect. They hate everybody. Well, good luck with people trying to get just just be genuine. And just because you're genuine doesn't mean they're going to follow you. But at least you could go to bed at night knowing you didn't lead somebody into something they didn't know what they were getting involved with. That's all I care about. Number eight. A lot of you seek counseling, seek mentorship, but deserve it. That's all I'm saying, deserve it. You know who deserves my mentorship? The people that are accountable to the plan they put together, to the people that know how to lead. They're, they're out there. For people that have shown the perseverance to go out there and just hit their first rank. The ones that commit to the trainings that I do. The ones that I know, know the plan. The ones that always talk good about the company and the leadership. That's who gets my counseling. You follow me? They got to deserve it. They got to deserve it. And if you're seeking it, then understand that part of it. And now when you're out there and you're getting your mentorship, it's because they're mentoring somebody they know truly has a desire. Remember guys, your leadership does not have to work with you. Okay, and, and, and here's the other thing, and I'm gonna counterdict myself a little bit, but okay, so what? What if you don't have a good upline? What if you don't have a sponsor that, that, that you really believe in? You still edify them. But you know what? You know when Lisa and I's business turned? When we took responsibility for it. When it didn't matter who was above us. Providing the company kept delivering the product, providing the company paid the commissions, it didn't make a difference. It didn't make a difference who my upline was. Eventually I had to take control of my situation. But you know what? I would never have gotten to where I was without the tough talk from a mentor that really cared. Never, I probably would have never got past, right? M making my schedule. Because I was always looking for the answer. But I also had to be prepared to hear it. And I, I was prepared to hear it only because, and I, you guys know this, the fear of going back to work was more fearful than putting together my plan. 
Remember, because I had burnt the boat, remember? I went full time, okay? Well, that was the fear that drove me, drove me to my plan, drove me to learn how to lead, drove me to hit my company ranks, drove me to commit to my, re it was fear of the known. The fear of the known was greater than the fear of the unknown. The unknown was working on myself because I didn't have to work on myself when I work for somebody else. I just had to follow what they told me to do. But eventually, the fear of the unknown became the motivation. I want to make sure that I never went back to work for somebody else. And here I am, 25 years later, we, Lisa and I have not had a job. The, the thought of it makes me crazy. So seek the counseling, but remember, when you get it, be prepared for it. Because all that is, all a counselor is going to do is hold you accountable. That's all. Number nine, promote the tools and events. Your company has tools. It has the events. You want to make sure you stay plugged into these. These are things you've heard over and over again. Okay. But <clears throat> it's so important. And, you know, a lot of you are very consistent on success zone, but I want you to be consistent in the company that you represent. But here's my thing. As you do anything, you do everything. So if you're on success zone, I promise you, you're probably at your company events. It's, 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 it's who you are, but don't just be a professional attendee. It's another thing you could fall into. Man, I don't know. I just told me if I have a good reading library and a listening library and I go to all the company events, I'm going to become successful. No, the thing you left out was the activity. You could become a professional student. Remember, there are some of those out there, right? They keep going to school. <laughs> why do you go to keep, why do you keep going to school? Take what you've learned and go do something with it. Oh, I don't want to do that. Education so important to me. Just read through what they're really saying. And what they're really saying is, right, they don't have no belief in themselves. They believe they could show up, but they don't believe they could promote the activity needed to accomplish their goals. Or maybe they don't have any goals. Maybe they need some personal development. So these are the critical activities. And just as a reminder, okay, just because I like doing it, I want to make sure you know, right, what you're offering people. Here goes Jeff again with that, with that opportunity. <clears throat> and I just want you to just take a minute <clears throat> Take 30 seconds of silence and everybody just read and tell me because the big thing about your business, the number one thing you have to do is you have to offer your opportunity and it starts with your belief. So do you believe that everybody on the list that you're going to make would want something on this slide? There's your belief. Can anybody really say, no, everybody I know is every, their life is completely perfect. There's not one thing on this slide they would want. Okay. Then there's your belief. Grab that. Just believe that you know that everybody would want it. Now, why do they say no? Because they don't believe it. So if the person who's relaying it believes it, does that not better your chances to get people to see what you see? And then maybe that's the opening to let them see a video, put them on a webinar. Your job is to get them to see, that's all. That's all it is. It's up to them to wanna see it. 
You know how many people see this and they go, yes, I want that, I want that. But then when it comes to making the decision, okay, they become blinded again. Why? Just remember why. Fear takes over. It's the fear of the unknown. Here's somebody who's worked 20 years, 25 years, and now you're going to tell them they're going to have residual income? They don't believe it. So they got to want to be led to the information. And everything that you've done with these nine critical activities is going to put you in such a posture. You have such a posture and belief system, it's going to transfer to that person, to more people, to at least receive your information or receive your product. That's all it is. Remember, you're never trying to get everybody. If you just got 1% of the people you've talked to, if you talk to enough people, you're stinking rich. I mean, the, the, the opportunity I'm with now, can I have this conversation all, almost every day? A, a target for us are physicians. And I keep telling everybody, you're not looking for every physician to say yes. Our company goal is to get 1% of the physicians. That means 99 out of 100 are going to tell you no. Does it matter? No. It only matters if they affect you. Well, if you're doing these things, right, and you're committing to these activities and you're finding your little successes, it never affects you. So, guys, I want you to have a great weekend. Um, we'll reconvene on Monday. And uh, once again, just really look at what's on here. I'll leave it up here for 10 more seconds before I log off. And just grade yourself. Right. Let's let's try to make let's let's try let, let's try to take the next step. Great. Let's figure out what you have to really work on. Okay. And I'm going to focus a lot of you on start to really know your plan, know your presentations, and start doing them. Something happens when you start doing it yourself. You believe. So I appreciate you guys as always. Have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday. Bye.